G'day folks, Sean here from Air Photography. So I've been asked by some of my regular viewers to make a comparison of all three action cameras, the new Insta360 Ace Pro, the GoPro Hero 12 Black, and the Osmo Action 4. All these cameras were released earlier this year. The first one we got was the Action 4 back in the summertime. Then of course we got the Hero 12 Black in September. And just most recently last week, we got the Insta360 Ace Pro. Now in this comparison video, I'm gonna be showing you some side-by-side -side footage of all the cameras. And uh, we're just gonna do one at a time just so you can get a bigger view of it. And we're basically gonna be comparing it against the Insta360 Ace Pro because I've already done comparisons against these two cameras. I've also done a full review of each camera, the Action 4, the Hero 12, and the Ace Pro. So you can go back and watch them as well to kind of get a good in-depth look at my thoughts on them. But on top of the footage, the side-by-side -side footage comparisons we're going to be doing, we're going to be talking about features and comparing features of each camera because the features and what they offer can be a deciding factor on which camera you choose as well. And I just want to mention that no matter what camera you choose, you're going to be happy with your purchase. All the cameras are pretty solid and I'm not going to force my opinion down your throat. You know, we all have different needs and what we like in an action camera. However, at the end of this video, I will offer my opinion on which one I think is most exciting. So let's start with some of the physical aspects of the cameras and uh, size and weight. When it comes to size, the Action 4 is the smallest of all the cameras. Now they're all nice and compact, so I don't know if I would base a decision solely on that. But let's do a reading of the weight of each one, just for those who are curious. You can see the Ace Pro is 179 grams. The Hero 12 is 152 grams, and the Action 4 is 146 grams. Now moving on to the physical capabilities of the cameras, let's talk about mounting. Both the Action 4 and the Ace Pro offer magnetic mounting, and for the most part both actually work quite well. I'm actually quite pleased with both the way they work. Unfortunately for the GoPro it still just features a traditional finger mount, which works just fine. And uh, magnetic mounting is not going to be important for everybody. It's not going to be a deciding factor. Uh, for me, it's very important just because I am moving my cameras around quite a bit when I'm out filming. So when it comes to mounting versatility, I would have to say that the Action 4 and the Ace Pro have the advantage. Now I'm going to turn each camera on here and we're going to talk about front facing screens. All cameras are capable of having a front facing screen but you'll notice a big difference here with the Ace Pro. With the Action 4, the Hero 12, we have a small screen on the front. The screen on the front of the Ace Pro just displays data. If you want a front facing screen you have to fold the back out. And to me, that is absolutely brilliant because you get a nice big preview. It's much easier to line up your shot. And more importantly, it's easier to make sure you have good exposure and everything looks good. Sometimes on these small screens, it's really hard to tell if the exposure is okay. But with the Ace Pro, as you can see there, you can get a nice big view of what you're filming. But the really good thing about the way that this is designed is that you can get a nice preview even when the camera is mounted in an awkward position. If you've got this mounted down low, you can just have the screen folded up and still get a preview of your shot. Whereas with the Action 4 and the GoPro, you just can't do that. There's no really easy way to get a preview to frame your shot when you're mounting it in certain scenarios. So I would definitely say that the Ace Pro has the advantage when it comes to previewing and framing shots. GoPros are also a little bit behind in the fact that that front screen is not touchable. You can't change any settings from that front screen. And now that's not gonna be important for every scenario. 
uh, but quite often, whereas with the Action 4 you can, and of course with the Ace Pro you can. Now that's not important for every scenario, but there are times with the way your camera is mounted, being able to adjust a setting or change modes quickly from a front facing screen, it can be very important. So the next thing let's talk about here is resolutions. All these cameras are capable of capturing different types of resolutions. The max resolution on the Action 4 is 4K. The GoPro Hero 12 Black is 5.3K. And the Ace Pro can capture all the way up to 8K at 24 frames per second. Of course, it can capture at 4K as well. That's going to be the most common resolution that you're going to be capturing in. 8K is not really something you'll probably be using a lot because it's going to be very taxing on your system trying to edit the footage. And the file sizes are going to be just massive. But if you are looking for the highest resolution that you can get on an action camera, the Ace Pro is definitely the choice for you. When it comes to slow motion video, they all do an excellent job. I wouldn't say one has better quality than the other. You know, they all do a really nice job with slow motion. The only difference is the GoPro Hero 12 Black can do a little bit higher resolution when it comes to eight times slow motion. All cameras do 4K at 120 frames per second, which in my opinion is probably the most common. That's what I like to film in. I think it looks natural. If you want to go to eight times slow motion, with the Ace Pro and the Action 4, you have to film at 1080. However, with the GoPro Hero 12 Black, you can film at eight times slow motion in 2.7K. Now, if you take a look at this 2.7K, eight times slow motion, it looks decent, but you can see the quality is really degraded. And that's where I say that the 4K 120 frames per second slow motion just looks the best. It's still nice and clear. Now, a really nice feature that the Ace Pro has is something called Clarity Zoom. So with Clarity Zoom, you can zoom in up to two times without losing any quality. If we take a look at this footage here, you can see we're filming here at one times. And then of course now we're gonna zoom in to two times and the footage still looks really good. The Action 4 is capable of two times zoom. I'll just show you a side by side here. On the left hand side is from the Ace Pro at two times. And on the right hand side is from the Action 4 at two times. So you can see that the Ace Pro footage looks a little bit better and it still maintains a lot of its detail. Now the Hero 12 Black is a little bit different in the fact that it can only zoom up to 1.4 times. So you can't get in quite as far. And the other big difference is you have to commit to that zoom before you start recording. Both the Action 4 and the Ace Pro, you can zoom while you're recording. Whereas the Hero 12 Black, once you start recording, you can no longer zoom. Now, one of the big differences of these cameras is the low light capabilities of the Ace Pro. I've already done a comparison of that, but I'll just show you the footage here again on both cameras. Now, although the Action 4 and the Ace Pro have the exact same sensor size, due to the five nanometer chip that's included with the Ace Pro, it can process that low light footage in real time. The Action 4 and the Hero 12 just cannot do that. And that makes all the difference. Let's start with the Hero 12 Black. You can see on the left hand side, I have the Ace Pro and on the right hand side is the GoPro Hero 12 Black. You can see the GoPro is struggling. There's a lot of smearing and blurring. And of course the stabilization is just non-existent. GoPros have never really done well in low light. In order for stabilization to work properly, you need a lot of light and a very fast shutter speed. So you can see when comparing these two cameras, just how much better the Ace Pro is. Now, when we compare the Ace Pro to the Action 4, it's not quite as drastic. The Action 4 actually does a pretty good job in low light, but you will notice from time to time, the stabilization kind of falls apart a little bit on the Action 4. Again, that's to do with the processing of the Ace Pro. The Ace Pro is far superior when it comes to low light for both stabilization and quality. When you're filming, it's buttery smooth. You have good stabilization still, which is actually pretty incredible for an action camera at night. It almost looks like this is mounted in a handheld gimbal when filming at night. Now, low light is not important for everybody because quite often people aren't filming in the middle of the night with their action camera. However, that also translates to other scenarios as well, that low light capability. If you're filming on an overcast day in a tree canopy, you know, the light reaching where you're filming is very limited. So having good low light capability can be very important. It's gonna keep your footage looking nice and smooth and prevent blurring and smearing. So in that aspect, the Ace Pro definitely has the advantage. Now, when it comes to capturing GPS and telemetry data, none of these cameras can capture GPS on camera. However, there are some key differences that might be important to some users. With the GoPro Hero 12 Black, this is the first year that GoPro has removed GPS from the camera. 
You used to be able to capture GPS and put overlays on your videos if needed, but that's not possible anymore. Now, in all fairness, like I said, none of these cameras can do that. However, the key difference is at the current time, there is no way to do that with a GoPro. They may sell an accessory down the road that allows you to do that, but currently there is no way to capture GPS and telemetry data. So if that is something that is important to you, this camera just will not work for you. With both the Action 4 and the Ace Pro, they sell accessories that allow you to still capture data if you need to add telemetry to your videos. With the Action 4, DJI sells a remote that you can use that will capture the GPS data. You can then bring it into the Mimo app and overlay it on your videos. However, the Insta360 Ace Pro takes it a step further and in fact, if you already own an Apple Watch or a Garmin, you don't need to purchase any additional equipment. Your Apple Watch can record all the GPS data and then you can bring it into the Insta360 app and add your overlays. On top of that, Insta360 sells this really nice GPS unit. What's nice about it, not only will it capture the GPS data, you can also get a preview of what you're filming. As you can see, I do have it here. I'm gonna be making a separate video about this device, so if you are interested in it, keep an eye on my channel. With this, you can wear it like a wristwatch, or it even comes with a little handlebar mount so you can strap it to a bike. If you just want it for preview purposes, you can always just stick it in your pocket and pull it out when you need to get a preview. So I would have to say when it comes to GPS and telemetry data, Insta360 definitely has the advantage. As mentioned, you don't even have to spend any money if you already own an Apple Watch. And while we're talking about Apple Watches, the Insta360 Ace Pro is the only camera that offers an app for the Apple Watch. With their app, you can launch it. I don't have it connected right now, but you can get a live preview right on your watch. You can use your watch as a remote to stop and start recording. And that is actually a very useful feature, especially if you have your camera mounted a ways from you and you can't see the preview screen. You can always just look at your watch and know that your shot is lined up correctly. So that is definitely a huge advantage for some people. Now, when it comes to stabilization, I would have to say that all cameras are equal. They all do a really good job at stabilizing footage. All cameras have different levels of stabilization, so you can go in and adjust it to whatever the scenario calls for. I've done a lot of looking at footage, I've done a lot of comparisons, and I can't really say that one is better than the other. I'll show you some side-by-sides of both the GoPro and the Action 4, and you can decide for yourself what you think looks better. And when it comes to stabilization and third-party apps, all three cameras are supported in GyroFlow. Now, when it comes to connecting a microphone because you're gonna do some vlogging or you just want really good audio, I would have to say the Action 4 has the advantage. And the reason I say that is because with it, you can connect a microphone directly. You can plug any USB-C microphone directly into the USB-C port. You don't need any adapters. You can plug in a USB-C lavalier or a USB-C wireless microphone, and it's just going to work. With both the Ace Pro and the Hero 12 Black, you do need to purchase adapters. With the Hero 12 Black, you can get their media mod or the microphone adapter, and then use whatever microphone you wish to use. With the Ace Pro, you do have to purchase their microphone adapter. And then again, you can go ahead and choose any microphone that you want. Now with that said, they all work well. They all do the job properly. But the Action 4 is just a little more convenient because you don't need an adapter and you don't have to spend the money to purchase one. Now, when it comes to shooting vertical video, all cameras are capable of it, but I would have to say that GoPro has the advantage and that's for a couple different reasons. With the Action 4, in order to shoot vertical video, you actually have to mount the camera vertically and you have to use that frame that came with it. Now it's quick and simple and it works very well. But there is that step you do have to take the camera off the current mount and rotate it manually. And when you're filming in vertical, that's what you have. There's no switching back and forth. Of course, you can crop the video, but then you're gonna be losing a lot of resolution. However, with the Hero 12 Black and the Ace Pro, they give you some really interesting tools for shooting vertically if you're gonna be uploading to social media. And not only for shooting vertical, but you can film once and then crop easily in post. Now, the reason I say the GoPro has the advantage is because we can shoot in a 16 by nine, and that's your traditional aspect, your horizontal. 
or we can switch it over to vertical. So you can see there in the preview, we're now filming in vertical. So you don't have to rotate the camera, you don't have to do anything. You can just simply go into your settings and change the aspect. On top of that, we can shoot at an eight by seven. And that's nice because then you can go in later and post and either crop it to a vertical or a horizontal with losing very minimal resolution because it's almost a complete square. Now with the Ace Pro here, it's a little bit different. They actually have a mode, it's called free frame mode. And when you're in it, again, it's in a four by three, so it's not quite square, but it's close. And we can actually enable a preview and it's gonna show us how it's gonna be framed for both vertical and horizontal. So we can film once in this mode, then in post, we can either crop it to a vertical or a horizontal video. And that is really important because if you're gonna be uploading to multiple platforms, either YouTube or YouTube Shorts, you just have to film once and then you can export your video in whatever format or aspect you want. Now, the Action 4 has some unique features that aren't available on the Hero 12 Black or the Action 4. So I'm just gonna start recording here and show you some of these because they're actually quite interesting. Uh, first off, down in the bottom left-hand side, you can see we have a button. If we press that while we're recording, it's gonna capture a snapshot as well. So you can take a photo while you're recording. Now you can do that on a GoPro, but it requires you to do that later on in post. You have to bring the video into the app and then of course you can extract a photo. But with the Ace Pro, you can do it while you're recording in real time. The other really interesting thing, and this is a huge feature for some people, is we can pause recording. So you can see we're recording, we're at 31, 32 seconds there. I can hit that pause button and the recording has now paused. Once we're paused, that shutter button becomes a pause and unpause button. So I can press that and it's gonna continue recording. When you're done, you just press that button there at the side and that's now going to save the video. And it's also processing the photo that we took in there as well. Being able to pause recording is a really unique feature that's just not available on these other action cameras. But it's even more interesting because we can go into our gallery here and pick any video. So let's do uh, this one here. You can see we're in the preview and it could be a video that you shot three or four days ago or a week ago. But we can press that button down there in the corner. Now when I hit record, we are now adding to a video that we shot previously. So if you have a video from a week ago that you just want to add to the end of it, you can do so very easily. Now when it comes to battery performance, all the cameras perform fairly decently. There's been a lot of technology and changes to batteries over the last couple of years. However, when it comes to charging, both the Ace Pro and the Osmo Action 4 support fast charging. With the Osmo Action 4, you can charge a battery from 0 to 80% in 18 minutes or so it's rated. I've never actually timed it. And the Ace Pro can charge a battery from 0 to 80% in 22 minutes or so it's rated. The GoPro Hero 12 Black is quite lacking in that department. According to their website, their stats, it takes 2 hours to go from 0 to 80%. So that can be important if you're out in the field and your batteries die, you could plug your action camera, your Ace Pro or your Osmo Action 4 into a power bank and in 20 minutes it's going to give you over an hour's worth of recording. Now when it comes to auto editing, all cameras are capable of auto editing within the app. All cameras can add highlights while you're recording and that makes finding your footage good moments later on while editing a little easier. However, the Insta360 Ace Pro does take it a step further. With it, we have a feature called AI Highlight Assistant. You can see we just turned it on there. And what that's gonna do is while we're recording, it's gonna automatically add highlights when the AI detects that something interesting is happening. With the GoPro and the Action 4, we have to manually add those highlight tags. And that can be super important because if you've been out for the day, you might have hours worth of footage that you have to sift through. Letting the AI help you decide where some good moments are happening can save you a lot of time. But what's really interesting is you can export just the highlights. Unlike a GoPro in the Action 4, you have to unload all your footage to your smartphone or computer to edit it. With the Ace Pro, it will automatically choose your highlights. You can then go in and preview the highlights right from within the media player within the camera. And then you have the option to save the highlights as separate clips or just merge them together as one. The nice thing about that is you can just bring those highlight clips over to your smartphone. So you're not gonna be wasting space and time transferring large files. So if you're a person who likes to edit quickly on the go, it's a great feature. Again, that feature is just not available on the Action 4 
or the GoPro Hero 12 Black. All three cameras are capable of capturing HDR. With the GoPro Hero 12 Black, you have to manually turn on that HDR before you record, so you do have to commit to it. With both the Action 4 and the Ace Pro, if you're filming at 4K 30, it's automatically gonna turn HDR on. So you're gonna always be filming in high dynamic range. You don't have to make that decision out in the field while you're recording. You know that the footage is always gonna look good. It's always gonna be evenly exposed, even when the lighting conditions are very complex. So we've taken a look at some footage and we've talked about some of the features and some of the differences, the most common ones anyways. So when deciding what action camera is right for you, you just have to look at what features are most important to you. When it comes to video quality during good lighting, I would say they're all pretty well neck and neck. I wouldn't say that one is any better than the other in good lighting conditions, except perhaps maybe the Insta360 Ace Pro. Because they do use Leica optics, they do have a bit of an advantage there, especially when it comes to dynamic range. Just in my opinion, I think the Insta360 Ace Pro has a little bit better dynamic range than these other cameras, and that includes clarity and detail. If you take a look at this shot here side by side, you can see the Insta360 Ace Pro just offers a little bit more detail in the clouds. And sometimes at the end of the day, it's just those little differences that make video look really good. Now at the beginning of this video, I told you I would give you my opinion on which camera I was most excited about. And I would have to say it's the Insta360 Ace Pro, and that's actually for a couple different reasons. And again, this is just on how I use my cameras and how I film. If you're a regular to my channel, you know I was doing some vlogging this summer, some outdoor adventures, and it was something I really enjoyed and I want to pursue further. Next summer, I'm gonna be opening a dedicated outdoor channel. I'm gonna be doing some vlogging and sharing some of my outdoor adventures, camping, hiking, canoeing and kayaking. And I think the Insta360 Ace Pro is gonna be a great camera for me for a couple reasons. First of all, this fold-out screen is going to be super useful for framing shots. It's one thing when you're vlogging and you have the camera right in front of you, these front-facing screens work well, but as soon as you have the camera mounted a little bit away, if you got it on a tripod, which I'll be doing quite a bit in my Outdoor Adventure channel, just taking a quick glance at the camera, I'll be able to make sure everything is lined up correctly. As mentioned, it's a little bit easier to check for things like exposure, but on top of that, being able to get a live preview on my Apple Watch or even their GPS unit is gonna be very beneficial when I have the camera and I'm getting far away shots. Of course, I will be filming a lot at night around a campfire, doing some night hikes, maybe some night riding, and having that superior low light capability is gonna be very important. On top of that, some of the exclusive features it has, like being able to pause recording, you can cancel recording. I think it's something I haven't even talked about. So that will save a lot of space on the memory card. If you need to restart something, you don't have to go in and manually delete it. But another really big feature of this camera that I've already talked about, which I think is gonna be very beneficial for me this summer, especially when capturing B-roll, is that AI Highlight Assistant. If I'm using my other action cameras, I'm gonna to have to go through hours worth of footage to find just little moments, perhaps little B-roll clips, which can be very time consuming. With the Ace Pro, like I said, it's gonna go through, add highlight clips that I can then just bring over into my phone or whatever I'm editing on, my iPad. It's gonna save a lot of space and a lot of time. On top of that, the Insta360 app supports background downloading. And again, for me, that can be huge. If you've spent a day filming, you can start the download process and continue editing or doing whatever you're doing on your smartphone or iPad with the Hero 12 Black or the Action 4. When you're transferring content over, you have to keep the app running, which can take a long time. If you've ever transferred large files, you know that sometimes you can spend a good half hour, 45 minutes transferring content. So that background downloading is also a great feature. But as mentioned, they are all solid cameras and no matter which one you go with, you're gonna be happy with your purchase. For me, I think the Insta360 Ace Pro just brings a lot of new innovative features that we haven't seen on an action camera. Especially this year, the releases were a little bit stale. And I did talk about that in my Hero 12 Black review. I was a little disappointed with some of the innovation that they brought this year. It was more just a firmware upgrade. They didn't really bring anything new to the table. Nothing that really excited me anyways, or really helped enhance my workflow. Well folks, those are my thoughts on these three cameras and a little bit of a side-by-side -side comparison and feature comparison. If you have any questions about any of these cameras, feel free to ask down in the comments. Either myself or somebody else from the community would be more than happy to answer them. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.